Joshua chapter 8 tells the story of how Israel recovered the high ground. How do, you, how do you go from defeat into victory? When you have just absolutely bombed in your life, like they did in Joshua chapter 7 with the sin of Achan, and the whole of Israel could not go forward because of the sin of one man. So how do you go from that abject defeat back into the victory that God intends you to live? He intends you to live in fellowship with him, in relationship with him, and in moral victory in your life. The things that you struggle with, you are not intended to struggle with. He has sent the Holy Spirit so that we can live in full covenant with the Lord. That's true, isn't it? So how do you get from one to the other? How do you go from defeat to victory? And at the beginning of chapter 8, God encourages Joshua and gives him some simple instructions. Do not be afraid. Do not be dismayed. That's the first key to regaining victory. They had to receive the encouragement from God. It's like a parent coming to a child who's fallen over, who's skinned their knees and said, come on, come on, it's all right. Just get up again, get up again. You have fallen, you must rise again. It's very significant, this. What is past is, is past. And if you hold on to it when it's been dealt with, as that sin had been dealt with in Joshua chapter 7 very strongly, but you can still mull over it in your mind, can't you? <laughs> and think about it too much. What's past is past. We must deal with it before God in repentance. We must die to ourselves and then look forward to what God has for us, what's in front of us. Because God intends to use our failures in a good way, in a right way, to use them as a foundation for, for development, for victory. As someone said, your mess can become your message. The way that God dealt with you in the past, through your problems, is part of the deal. It's part of the way he encourages you for the future. So God uses that failure in Israel. Take all the people of war with you. Arise, go up to Ai. God wasn't despondent or depressed. He didn't want Joshua to be so either. Now it's time to get busy. And set about doing what God's called you to do because he has not abandoned you. He, he never does, you know. He never does. Those who come to me, I will never cast out. I am with you always. I'm with you always. Not only when you're good. It says, take all the people of war with you. And this time, curiously, he changes the rules. He's just said to all the what you might think of as rules. He said to them, nothing from Jericho. And now he said, from Ai, you can take the spoil and the cattle as booty for yourselves. God is allowing them to keep, keep all for themselves. Now, how foolish does the sin of Achan seem? If he had just waited a little bit, God wanted their obedience and now he was going to give them his blessing. If he had just waited just a little bit, instead of coveting a very little, God was ready to give him a lot but on his terms, not on their terms. He said, lay an ambush for the city behind it. He gave Joshua a plan for capturing the city, and he, he has to follow it. And if you want to get from defeat into victory, you need to get close to the Lord, listen to him, and do what he says. If at this point they decided to do something else entirely, I don't see how God could have blessed them. And then a lovely little point in verse 9 and 10, it says, Joshua lodged that night among the people. He was especially close to them. He had torn his robe and put dust on his head at their defeat. He prayed to the Lord. And the leader now wasn't in his super deluxe tent down the street. He was with the people. He wanted to be with them during the crucial time of regaining their victory. And the people needed to know that he was there with them. They wanted to follow his leadership. They needed to hear his voice with them. And if you want to get from defeat to victory, you've got to stay close to Jesus, who is our, our Joshua. Sometimes we overthink things, don't we? We kind of mull them over and then tease them about and, and rationalise. So, no, there's one thing is needful. Stay close to Jesus. Stay close to the voice of the Lord. Keep your prayer line open and 
you will get back into the victory that he intends for you. And so the ambush works, the men of Ai come out, the Israelites flee, and it, they lead them into an ambush, and they pretend to be beaten. It's a classic little piece of military st strategy, and Ai is conquered. So here's the, here's the plan for today. Be encouraged. Don't be despondent about your past failure. Accept it, receive from the Lord, and get ready to move on. And then follow the Lord's plan. Use every resource that you've got and the best resource and stay close to your leader. Sometimes when people fall into sin, that's the moment when they start, stop going to church or they f fall away from fellowship because oh, they're a bit ashamed of what somebody might think about them. But that's the very time when you have to stay close. You have to stay in fellowship, stay in prayer. Live with Jesus, look to Jesus and listen to this. That's the time to go on the offensive with the whole of your life. Amen? That was Israelites' experience as they moved from total defeat into complete victory. May it be ours, in Jesus' name. Amen.